What's up guys, it's Natural here and welcome back to another year 2016 episode where we're at the quarterfinal stage of the Euros and today was Portugal versus Poland and let's talk about the game. Portugal had a we probably you know made some changes to the lineup. They brought in Ronaldo Sanchez and I think Martinho was dropped and Poland was unchanged and the game Poland started the brighter, Portugal didn't. And the goal came from Lewandowski. Great play from Poland. Crossed the ball and Lewandowski gets his goal eventually in this tournament, even though he's been waiting. He's had so many chances to score. But this is what top players do. You they, if you have a chance you have to keep 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 at it and they Finally, gets his goal. Really, I'm glad because you want you do want to see top players go home with new goals. You don't want to see that. But anyway, he gets his goal. And then you know Poland were a better team in the first 15 to 20 minutes. Then you know Portugal actually woke up. Actually woke up. Um, and probably the best player on that pitch tonight, well by a mile, is the kid Roberto Sanchez. I thought he was outstanding. I just thought, you know, his link up play was amazing. His pace, power, uh, he's, got, he's touching his... He is, for a kid, he's only 18, for a kid, for, for touch and for passing, he's incredible. It's incredible. I've never seen anyone like that before. It's, he, he just takes it to another level. It's amazing. And, yeah, and then... They got back in the game, no thanks to the player of the playing game, Renato Sanchez, great finish, well great, great play from him, Nani with a nice, you know, back flick for him, even though Nani had a poor game tonight, and yeah, he scores, took a bit of deflection, but he puts it in the net, 1-1, and they had hard chances as well, they shoot out a penalty from Ronaldo, I don't know, I literally don't, I... A skeptic of a man, the fifth and sixth official doing that freaking goal line. I don't know. I literally don't know what they do there. They only do one job. Not two jobs anymore. Go on the knowledge we have now. We don't even. They don't even look what the balls on the line. They only do one job. The same as a penalty. And they don't even do that job. Then what the fuck are they paid for? Um, anyway, um, one one finished was half time. Second half. Pretty much was poor. Literally, it was that bad. I mean, it was the second half. Was, it was like watching the Croatia Portugal game again. It was just so poor from Portugal. And no, I got Poland. You know, they're that type of team. They're not gonna go all out attack. They're not. They're not built like that. They're not that type of team. They were poor uh, Portugal. Cause I, I fought better than Portugal. I thought they were doing. Second half got that goal. You know. Come out in the second half and put more emphasis in the game, put more tackles in the game. We didn't do anything again. The game was just it was like a testimonial game. It was so poor. Anyway, um there's often me to talk about the second half where then Ronaldo's big chance he bloody missed. Literally. Missed a one that's right. Cristiano Ronaldo had a one on one chance with Fabianski. He looked at the goalkeeper, but he looked at the bloody ball and he looking miss contact and he uses Weaker foot to head the ball, so yeah, um, that pretty much was all I need to say in the second half because it was so dull. And the extra time, there's nothing to talk really apart from the streaker on the pitch. Don't know how to go on the pitch, I don't know what the stewards there to do in the first place. Just sit there and watch, hmm, hold on, it's the streaker on the pitch. Hmm, and okay, I'm gonna watch this begin. Literally, I mean, for goodness sake, they had to do a job, really. And probably, probably, probably that's only good excitement in the freaking extra time. Was the streaker on the bloody pitch to make some good entertainment for the fans watching and the toy in the crowd? Boy, Ronaldo, boy, applause, yeah, yeah, Jesus, oh. Anyway, um, um, yeah, extra time was boring as hell, so it went to penalties yet again for Poland. And I think it's the first penalty that England Portugal have had since. The Euro 2012 tournament, I think it is. Um, and yeah, Ronaldo, who missed the penalty against Austria, has had probably an awful tournament so far. Stepped up, put it in the back net, 
something Messi couldn't do. I'm not going to disrespect Messi. I'm not to just terrible pun I did there. Um, Poland main man Lewandowski stepped up, put in a beautiful penalty, one-one. Then you know Poland had some more penalties scored, and I mean they're taking advantage of Sanchez's penalty. I thought was the best. Oh, I mean, he's only 18 and he's, the cat, I mean, England players should take note of this, or any team take note of penalties, probably even England, they're awful to penalties. When you're taking a penalty, don't rush it. Just keep calm. Just keep calm. Literally keep calm. Remember, if you're an 18 year old, to have that composure and finish that as a, as a top pen, for the first time, the second penalty scored. And then, you know, the other penalties, then they came out to the big pen for Poland. He missed it. Berkowski, Missed it. I, 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 I wouldn't say he hit it badly. He hit decent. I think the goalkeeper made a decent, if I've, an incredible save. And then the man who got the goal against Croatia, Charisma, steps up for his penalty. The fifth man and puts it in and then the goalkeeper got a sit, touch to it, but it was just, he hit that so cleanly, Charisma. Therefore, Ronaldo may still win a major tournament for Portugal. We don't know. They're in the semi-finals. And yeah, congratulations to Portugal on qualifying, on heading to the semi-finals. And commemorations to Poland. I thought, even if you did, you do go home, I thought you just had a great tournament. You know, to, um, okay, we all knew we were going to make it out of the group stage. But, you know, to get to a quarter-finals, Poland, I think you've done your country proud. We've had a great tournament, and yeah, yeah, that's all I'm going to say really. Now we go on to the other two things I have to talk tonight about, um, starting off with England. Now, the last time I made a video, I England beat Iceland. I think all the England supporters are going to hate me for saying that again, but yeah, I've really done. But this is what I'm going to talk about is England, where they go as a nation, and where they go as a team. Um, England have quad players. Um, I just think Roy Hudson is too loyal to some of the players. I also think he didn't know what system to play. And probably this is the biggest one, I feel. I think he's just too many yes men at e at at, uh, at the FA. I really do. If you look, look his whole criticism of Roy Hudson was why would you change the system after you won every single game in the qualifiers? Okay, you may have been in the qualifiers, but why would you change the system you won every game in the qualifiers? And also, why would you not bring players in that are not in form? That, 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 you know what I mean? It might have been bringing in Andros Townsend. You know, amazing season, end of the season in Newcastle. Probably the reason why we nearly stayed up. Um, you could say, why did Rashford not start in any of the games? Why did Vardy not play up front? Or play Vardy and Kane up front, and then put Rashford or Rooney in the middle of Diamond. Literally, I, this is the problem. And then you play Sterling. I mean, Sterling for me hasn't caught it. Hasn't caught it at, at, at Man City. He hasn't caught it in England since his debut for England. I'm poor, but this is this is what I feel about England. England have got Roy Hodgson, who's too loyal and there's too many yes men and that, and that for him. And there's all speculation that, that, that they're going to get Gareth Southgate. You know, Eddie Howe has been in Glen Hollow. Alan Pardew, literally. If you get Alan fucking Pardew, I'm done. I mean, you're already screwed as much. But if you get Alan Pardew, you're effed screwed. But um, literally, no. You, I mean, I had to hope anyone for you in the fight, fight. He was he was our manager for four years, maybe more. He he's a die. You want to play boring football? You're gonna get him. But anyway, um. Uh, this is my opinion. My opinion is squat, but I feel there's only one man that can take England forward, and I think it's Klinsman. I mean, let's take Klinsman's whole career. He took I, I, when he was in charge of, of the Germany team. I think it was two thousand four. I think they were in, they were knocked out in the group stage of the Euros in know four. Um, he took over one of the worst people say in Germany and all that stuff. The worst poor, the worst the the worst Germany squad. Since Nate was it nineteen eighty eight I think it was anyway um and then I, they got into they were the, they were the home nation host of the host of two thousand six World Cup gone to the semi final lose to 
a team they can't beat in tournament football, which is deadly. And there they are now. He 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 done the whole German revolution that is today. You know they've won a World World Cup and then they're one of the favourites to probably win the Euros. But he also took the American job. A few of the skeptical hadn't taken the American job, but he's transformed the USA team over in America. He he he. You think of the World Cup in 2014, people say they don't have a chance in the group. They're in the group of death. They don't have a chance against Ghana, against Portugal. Um, I forget there are two teams themselves. Uh, I think Germany are all team. They don't have a chance. They play, they, they play in Belgium. They're the group ahead of Ghana and Portugal. And they went to the next round, played Belgium, and they were bang on lucky not to beat Belgium in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And they came back like a hero and they were outstanding and even in the Copa America this year they got fourth place and only lost to Colombia who we probably were the best team in the World Cup and to and apart from Argentina and Chile, Chile are defending champions and won the Copa America again and Argentina are one of the best players in the world and also probably a great tack and end well that's an achievement for the United States and I think for me Klinsman is the right man for for Germany, and look, let's let me rephrase this now. We see, I'm not really into these two other sports. I'm not into them, right? But England cricket got an Australian, and they won things. England rugby won a, got got an Australian. Won a, I think it was the Grand Slam of rugby. I don't really, but I don't really into rugby. And also um, won the free test series in Australia. Uh, something like that. They need to go with rivals, and I think Klinsman would be perfect. Perfect for for Jens and um, for England, and that's just my opinion. I, that's my opinion. I mean, they, they, I just think the FA have got too many yes men. I just think Gareth Southgate would be another. He'd just be another Roy Hudson. I just think he'd be another Steve McLaren. They've got, they've got too many yes men. They just need a leader. They need someone different, and Klinsman gives them that. Anyway, that's just my opinion on England. And the last thing I need to say is the Bosque has resigned from Spain. No surprise. He can have his hell He's got them a World Cup and two European Championships. I just hope to God that Spain do not pick Rafa Benitez as their manager. He is our manager. He is Newcastle's manager. Where are the Geordies? You stay, you, 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 don't you dare, don't you bloody dare touch Rafa Benitez. He is our manager, I don't want him, I don't even want Spain to even talk to his representatives or his whatever. I want Rafa to just focus on Newcastle, to get us back in the Premier League, that's all I want. They can pick Pep Guardiola or whoever takes the Spain job, as long as not Rafa Benitez, I'm happy. And, you, and all my tune, all my Newcastle fans, hope you're happy if Rafa stays, because I have my fingers crossed, because I do not want him leaving Spain. I do not want him leaving Newcastle to join the Spanish team, because I don't want that. We've just got the best, one of the best managers in the world, and he's in the championship. I'm happy with what Rafa's doing at Newcastle. We don't want him to leave and go to Spain. You can take the Spanish job next 10 years. I don't care. He stays at Newcastle right now. Anyway, that's all I have to say so far in this... Um, Episode, um, like, like Portugal, for congratulations to the Americans and to Poland, England, for me, Klinsman and Rafa and Spain. Don't you dare touch Rafa and Benitez. Anyway, um, that's the end of another episode. Uh, please like, subscribe. The natural is out. Literally, I can't believe what I'm just seeing there. Anyway, it's because of a small nation, the smallest nation in the whole entire European Euro 2016 tournament championships this year. And that nation is Iceland. Iceland beat England. Let me say that one more time. Iceland beat England. Unbelievable. If you told me, if you told me at the start of this game that England would lose to Iceland, I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't think England will be shopping at Iceland anymore. My mums won't be going to Iceland anymore. Anyway, um, Let's start. Let's uh, talk about the game. Um, well, to start off with 